And so it begins from a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Berkeley. It is week one, and we welcome you to Pac-12 kickoff week presented by Taco Bell. The UC Davis Aggies make the 64-mile drive to Cal Memorial Stadium to take on the California Golden Bears. Hi, everybody, and welcome. It's great to have you. Welcome to college football, along with Shane Vereen. I'm Guy Haberman, a Cal team that felt oh so close so many times last year, very optimistic about what lies ahead. Yeah, you know, they are optimistic. They have a lot of talent, but unfortunately a lot of inexperience. And when you have talent with inexperience, you get potential. Now, potential can be a scary word, but if they can take what they've done in practice during camp onto the game field, I think they'll be all right. The experience they do have, they have at a key spot. Jack Plummer, the new quarterback for the Bears, the transfer from Purdue. Yeah, he transferred in from Purdue in January and he has done such a good job of first learning the playbook and second being a captain he is a captain on this team he is the leader of this offense so not only did he come in with a short time to learn the playbook but he has also won over his teammates big arm is going to give the offense a chance to throw the ball downfield you can see the highlights against Oregon State. He's played a Pac-12 <laughs> game before. That was week one, a win for Purdue. The captain on the other side, the quarterback of the defense, the safety returns, Daniel Scott. Yeah, Daniel Scott has played a lot of football. He is the experienced guy in the, in the back end of the defense in the secondary. He is a ball hawk. He is always and constantly around the football. The trick for him this season, can he take advantage of the opportunities that he is given? Well, for Cal, it's not going to be Daniel Scott all by himself. But the question will be, how will the transfers fit in? This is the new era. And look at the linebackers imported from around the league. Xavier Carlton from Utah, Jackson Sermon, UW, and Odawa Isabor from UCLA. Yeah, and all three of these guys give experience to a very unexperienced group. All three of these guys have played a lot of football. They have it underneath their belt. And they're going to re be replacing the likes of Coin Dang and Cameron Good from a year ago. Pac-12 kickoff week is presented by Taco Bell. And brought to you by Old Trapper, What's Your Beef? And by Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Just about ready for kickoff, clear skies and temperatures that will reach the low 80s, a warm Saturday here in the Bay Area. UC Davis won the coin toss and elected to defer the decision to the second half. And so Cal will start with the football. One of the key young players for this Cal team, Maven Anderson, the redshirt freshman, making his debut today. Back deep to receive the kick from Isaiah Gomez, and Anderson will fair catch it, and Cal will start with the ball at the 25-yard line. And so the offense that we've been waiting to see, they've been one of the focuses, no doubt, of fall camp for the Bears. They'll be the ones that get the first shot, and it's Jack Plummer with his group of youngsters around him, J. Michael Sturdivant, Maven Anderson, the talented receiver, Jeremiah Hunter, but definitely consistent at running back with Damian Moore. Yeah, Damian Moore has been here for a while. They trust him. They know him. They know his ability. And um, all the fans in Berkeley have grown to love him. 65% for his career, but 68.5% last year in four starts at Purdue. He threw seven touchdowns last season and did not throw an interception. And so Jack Plummer will begin in the shotgun with the tight end. Terry in motion. Here's Damian Moore for a couple yards on first down. Yeah, we're going to see a lot more uh, three wide sets from Cal this year. They have a lot of faith in the receiving core. Last year, we saw a lot of heavy tight end sets offensively, but this year they're looking to spread the ball out more. J. Michael Sturdivant, the freshman, red shirt at the top. Maven Anderson, the red shirt freshman in the slot, and Jeremiah Hunter at the bottom. Here's Plummer. Steps up with time, looking for Hunter, and he just overshoots him trying to take a shot downfield. He'd beaten Devin King the corner. Yeah, Devin King had pretty good coverage, but I still thought that Jeremiah Hunter was open. He had a great post route across the middle of the field, had a step on the defender. Those are the throws, I think, that is going to change the Cal offense. They're going to need to create more explosive plays, more big plays down the field. They, they tried to do it last year, didn't really have that much success, but this year that is a point of emphasis. And Plummer has the arm to do it. He, def he definitely does. So now with third down and eight on the opening possession. Four-man pressure. And Plummer gets sacked and goes down. And UC Davis with a big rush on third and long to make the stop. 
Yeah, that was on the left side. Ben Coleman was the left tackle. And a great job of bending the edge, a great job of getting his hands down and getting to the quarterback. That is one area on the offensive side of the ball that, from the Cal perspective, needs to improve, and that's the offensive line. So the punt for Cal will be fair caught at the 32-yard line by Trent Topkins. And that's where the UC Davis offense will start. Yeah, that first possession by Cal went, UC, went all UC Davis's way. As a, defensive, as a defensive strategy against Cal, you want to keep the ball in front of you. You want to force them to make big plays. And they did a great job of that. Defensively for UC Davis a year ago kind of fell off. Um, at the end of the season, and so they were able to get a stop to start this season off right. Miles Hastings, you see the numbers from last year. UC Davis went to the FCS playoffs for the second time in the program's history, and Hastings was the primary quarterback. Empty backfield here as he gets it out to Tompkins, who's hit immediately by Isaiah Young, the redshirt freshman corner. That was a great play by Isaiah Young. Read it beautifully and was able to get to the receiver uh, before the block was able to get to him. Peter Sermon and Justin Wilcox knowing the, the Dan Hawkins history. Cody Hawkins, his son, the offensive coordinator, the former Colorado quarterback, and they're expecting uh, the unexpected today with this UC Davis team. Hastings will get it down to Gilliam, the running back, who's cut down after a gain of a short one yard. Yeah, there was a receiver open to Hastings left in the flat, but he didn't see him, so he checked it down to his running back, which is a smart play, but a great job by Cal defensively to rally to the football. They're sitting back in a nickel defense right now, expecting pass and keeping everything in front. So when there is a shorter pass by the offense, they rally up, heads down, and everybody's making the tackle. This is key this year for Cal, third and long defensively. They did not perform well in these situations last year. Justin Kraft, the man in motion, but this is Trent Tompkins again, racing near the sticks, and he's going to be very close. Oluwafemio Ledejo among the Cal Bears there to meet him, and it looks like that will move the chains of first down for Tompkins. Yeah, and as a line of Cal, forcing Hastings to get out of the pocket. That was Xavier Carlton creating the pressure, the transfer from Utah making his Cal debut today, and it's third down and five. Land Larison has come into the game at running back. Gilliam subs out. Hastings is just going to throw it away. He was looking for the Cal transfer McAllen Castles, the big 6-5 tight end, and UC Davis will punt. That was a terrific job in coverage by Colin Gamble and Isaiah Young. It was two receiver route to that side of the field. They rolled the pocket, and they were able to be in the presence and be on top of the receivers. Hastings doing a great job of getting rid of the ball. Henry Gomez is going to be the punter for UC Davis. Jeremiah Hunter back deep for Cal. And he doesn't have much opportunity for a return, about four yards for the Bear, and Cal will have the ball from inside their own 15-yard line when we return. A couple of punts so far here in Berkeley, a Cal team that is used to playing in close games last year. There's Justin Wilcox, third longest tenured head coach in the Pac-12, beginning his sixth season at Cal after signing a contract extension back in January. And this is obviously one of the big things that Cal focused on in the offseason. One possession losses for a team that came up just shy of making a bowl last year. Of course, the Arizona game featured a, a heavily depleted team due to COVID protocols. But close games, they were in them. They just weren't satisfied with how they finished. Yeah, and Coach Wilcox wasn't shy about it. Instead of just turning the page, he says we would be dumb not to examine what caused those losses. And it came down to not that many things, more fundamentally more fundamental things that, than you would uh, understand. 
One receiver on the field, J. Michael Sturdivant, to run it with Damian Moore on first down for about four yards. Yeah, and, and, and as we were talking with Coach Wilcox about those things that led to those one-score losses a year ago, in, in those five games, they were either tied or leading. But what it came up to was giving up too many third and longs last year on defense, too many pass interferences on defense. Offensively, it was, came down to scoring in the red zone and creating more explosive plays. Those were an emphasis in camp. Those were an emphasis in the spring. And they feel as if they can improve on those parts of the game, they will be more successful this season. Second down at six for Moore again, and doesn't find much space. Teddy Buchanan, the captain from South San Francisco, a true sophomore, like many of these UC Davis players, a Bay Area native. There's a lot of Aggies from uh, the, the, the area surrounding here, Berkeley. And um, so you know there's a lot of guys motivated today to perform <laughs> like Teddy. Yeah, and also there's a, there's a couple guys that formerly were at Cal that are on the UC Davis team as well. So there's a lot of familiarity, not just from high school, but playing against each other in 2019. Including linebacker Evan Tattersall, who's not on the field right now for this third down and six. Moore remains in the game beside Plummer. Pressure from the secondary and Plummer can't get away. The second sack of the game for this Davis defense. Yeah, and that was Jalen White off the wide side of the field. He is listed as a corner. They had him inside almost as a nickel position at the snap of the ball. He came off the edge untouched. And you know, when you want to we want to protect a quarterback like Jack Plummer and give him time to dissect and read the defenses, you have to stop the free runners and giving runners just a free lane to the quarterback. Jamison Sheehan with his second punt of the day. Sending Trent Tompkins back. And Cal able to cover that kick well, but great starting field position just shy of midfield for UC Davis. Cal's offense to a slow, off to a slow start, somewhat reminiscent of the last meeting between these two teams. Back in 2019, Ulonzo Gilliam, Average five yards a carry that day for the UC Davis offense, but Christopher Brooks uh, got going and eventually Cal's offense with Chase Barbers was able to find its groove and Cal would defeat the Aggies 27 to 13. 11th all-time meeting here today and you can see offensively for UC Davis 36 points over the previous 10. This is Yulonzo Gilliam back to work. And with good starting field position, the Aggies into Cal territory. There is Dan Hawkins, sixth year at UC Davis. His alma mater, of course, formerly the coach at Colorado, was at Boise State, preceded Chris Peterson there. He hired Justin Wilcox at Boise State away uh, as a GA back in the early 2000s and helped launch Justin's coaching career. A couple of broken tackles and a first down out to the Cal 40 yard line for Chaz Davis. A pickup of 10 yards. Yeah, and Chaz Davis, they spoke very highly about him by the coaches. A camp standout, able to make two defenders miss, but keeping the ball tight and getting back up field for a good game. Now here's Hastings quickly out of his hands to CJ Hutton. And he gets ripped down. Oluwafemi Oladejo, a breakout candidate, a true sophomore, and a big man from Sacramento on this Cal defense. Yeah, when we were talking to the coaches and the, and the players, every time we brought up Oladejo's name, their eyes just got huge. He is athletic, he is strong, he is a monster of a man, and we're looking to see some big things from him this year. 6'3", 255 pounds in that Cal defense, and he's right there to help bring down Gilliam again. It's a good job by the Cal defense. Not being able to get too caught up into the into the game of their offense, not really moving the ball downfield, still holding strong, and now they have a chance on third and six. And it's a program that's definitely been built since Justin Wilcox took over on the strength of this side of the football. I need the 29 does Davis for the first. Hastings with time, throws just shy of the stick, and 
a wrestling match breaks out, and I think it's going to be fourth and short. Did not look like Davis was able to get there, and indeed he is marked a yard shy. Yeah, and that's kind of why they tell they tell the wide receivers. And you see Davis moving with some confidence here. Aggies who averaged just over 11,000 fans above capacity last year. Hastings Ooh. throws that one into traffic. <laughs> Colin Gamble, the nickel, was right there. Yeah, I think Colin Gamble watched his fair share of tape because you know when you see trips to one side and you see two guys spread out to the left, there's a big possibility of screen. And he read that and it looked like he was, it's like he knew exactly what the play was going to be. So now it's second down. Almost like he was on offense. One of the bets in the secondary. Put Hastings out wide up top. And Justin Kraft goes in motion, and here is Tompkins. And he gets tackled by Jaden Roberts. The interior of this Cal defensive line, of course, missing Brett Johnson, who was uh, expected to return and be not just the anchor of this defense, one of the best players in the entire league. He missed all of last year with that uh, broken hip, fractured hip, and he suffered an injury nine days ago in practice. That'll have him out for the season. Another third down. This is third and four. Hastings throws that complete. Blake Thorpe, the tight end, with a first down. Inside the red zone now are the Aggies. That was a good pass and catch by Blake Thorpe and Hastings. But honestly, defensively, they're just making this too easy for this UC Davis offense. It was a quick five and out, and the timing was there. The, the defenders were not. Um, they were able to rally up and make the tackle. But Cal needs to put a little bit more pressure and start making this UC Davis offense a little more uncomfortable. Hastings, the quarterback, is down at the bottom of the screen. It's Tompkins who has thrown the ball. He did so last year, handing it off here to C.J. Hutton behind the bla uh, block of Gilliam. It was Gilliam taking on Oladejo and a good gain there for the Aggies. That's more of what we're going to see from this Aggies offense as far as running the ball. They like to get the ball outside using sweet motions, using quick screens. And they direct snap it to Gilliam this time. 11th play of the drive. And Daniel Scott is there for the tackle, but that's another first down for UC Davis down to the five. And all, right now what we're seeing is this big offensive line for UC Davis wearing down the defensive line of Cal. They're getting great push. They're able to run the ball wherever they want at will right now. Cal substituting, rotating some of the linebackers, the defensive front. The former Bear Castles, the tight end for UC Davis, goes in motion. The snap to Hastings, the quarterback, and he's going to throw that one away and live for second and goal. Good job by Cal, understanding, you know, what UC Davis wanted to do in that, on that situation, on that play. And um, this is, this is going to be big. Um, I understand it's week one. There's week one anxiety. Um, specifically for the offensive side of the ball, the Cal not being able to get things going. But if the defense can have their back and hold them to three points, I think that would be a good sign. Quarterback Hastings at the top of the screen. Again, the snap to Tompkins, who's running left, and he doesn't have much space. Gets maybe a yard chased down by Odua Isabor, the UCLA transfer. One thing that's jumping off the screen to me right now is is the calmness of this UC Davis offense, but also this from the other side, the speed of the linebacking core for Cal. There's Jackson Sermon, the transfer from Washington, the fifth leading tackler in the Pac-12 last year. Third and goal. Can his Bears hold up? Gilliam not in the game for the Aggies right now. Larison in the backfield. Hastings looking. Plenty of time, and he throws complete. Touchdown, Chaz Davis. And the Aggies are on the board. What a drive. That was a phenomenal drive by this UC Davis offense. Chaz Davis, we said his name about three times on this drive alone, being exactly where he needed to be for Hastings and six points for the Aggies. Hastings had all the time in the world. Yeah. 
Well, Cal defensively has been sitting back in a cover two, trying to keep everything in front of him. There's a lot of side to side movement, um, especially in the run game for UC Davis. I like down by the goal line cover two, but against this team, I think they might have to throw some man in there. Isaiah Gomez for the point after a 14 play, nearly six minute drive, gives the Aggies the lead. 3.09 remaining in the first quarter, and UC Davis with a 7 0 lead after the uh, march of 53 yard but 14 play drive for the Aggies, resulting in the touchdown. Uh, Cal's got to get something going offensively. That was a systematic drive by UC Davis. That, that was impressive. And I know we've talked a lot about experience versus inexperience, but especially in week one, when there's the week one anxiety, week one jitters, this is where the experience kind of shows itself. Maven Anderson was back deep, but he doesn't get the opportunity. Cal Fair catches again the kick from Isaiah Gomez and take another look at the Chaz Davis touchdown. Yeah, so Cal sitting in a cover two. They're fine. It's just just a little too far off of Chaz Davis instead of in front of him. Uh, the linebacker dropped a little bit too far wide instead of staying in the in the middle of the field. And, you know, Hastings coach did call him a surgeon and um, and he was able to make an easy completion to Chaz Davis. Eight of touchdown. 12 passing right now is Hastings. Meanwhile, Plummer's only thrown one pass. It's been incomplete. Six plays, negative 15 yards of offense for Cal so far in this game. Plummer to throw on first down, and Jeremiah Hunter can't bring it in, and it is intercepted, bobbled and taken away by Teddy Buchanan, the San Francisco native with a pick, and UC Davis is right back in business. Yeah, Teddy Buchanan at the right place at the right time. Jeremiah Hunter unable to bring the ball in, bounces off the shoulder pads and right into <laughs> right into the arms. And you know, we, we, we talked to Coach Musgrave yesterday and, and he expressed that, you know, even this week of practice, he could tell that the guys were a little nervous. There were some, some drops during practice and, and they expect that. I, I mean, the coaching staff for Cal expects there to be some trials and tribulations and growing pains to work through. Um, the great thing about football is that it's a team sport. So when one side of the ball is struggling, it's up to the other side now to pick them back up. And I think defensively for Cal, they have to get off the field on third down. Offensively for UC Davis, go put up another six. Direct snap to Tompkins. Hastings not in the game right now, the quarterback. On a hot day, this defense forced right back onto the field for the Bears. And there's a pickup of four yards as now Hastings, the quarterback, jogs on. Looking at Trent Tompkins, who's the sophomore. Last year, he caught 12 passes. He threw 18 passes. And he uh, tied for the team lead in rushing touchdowns. So he does it all. Here he gives it to Lan Larison on the end of round. Larison, plenty of space. Looked like he might have wanted to throw. Instead, we'll just take the first down and gets down into the red zone again. Yeah, he did want to throw that, but Lumagia Hearns did a good job in the coverage down the field on Chaz Davis, so he does the smart thing, bring the ball down, and go get positive yards. Defensively, Cal knows that there's going to be some trick plays, some exotic-looking plays, and it's just up to them just to keep everything in front of them. 12-yard pickup. Here's Hastings, the quarterback, given to Larison, and Jackson Sermon, the first man there, got some help from Miles Jernigan for the stop after a pickup of half a yard. Jackson Sermon, the consensus preseason first-team all-leaguer, the second leading returner in the Pac-12, played at UW last year, graduated after the winter quarter and uh, came to play for his father, the defensive coordinator, Peter Sermon. C.J. Hutton with the catch. And UC Davis will have a third down and very short coming up. This UC Davis offense is rolling right now. Extremely confident, extremely comfortable, not rushing anything, taking their time and finding the open receivers in the, in the spots, the empty spots in the zone defense. Looking Hutton's way under pressure and just tosses it out of bounds. Gunner Rask, the redshirt junior from nearby De La Salle, was in pursuit. Yeah, and that was the first blitz or the first pressure that Cal has has called on defense. And look how and it worked out for him. Of course, you, you fear on the back end if you're bringing too many that it leaves receivers open. But more than anything, we 
Cal needs to get Miles Hastings off the spot. Get Miles Hastings uncomfortable. Another fourth down here. UC Davis one for one today. Tompkins is back there, no quarterback. Tompkins direct snap behind Gilliam, and he gets brought down by Daniel Scott, who comes slicing in for the stop, and that's what the Cal defense needed. That's the captain. That's what they need from their leaders. That's what they need from their captains. Fourth down, and you get a big play. And it was, it was there early. It was there early, but Daniel Scott was able to slice through the defense on the outside gap and make a sure tackle. Boy, did they need that. Elected to go directly to Tompkins, who's been effective so far today. Everything's been effective for, true. for UC Davis offensively today. That was a good job by Cal standing up. So now Plummer's going to go under center. Only receiver stirred of it. He goes in motion. Jaden Ott, the true freshman, makes his debut. And there's his first carry. And he breaks a tackle and shows what so many people around this Cal program are excited about. The young man who originally verbally committed to Oregon then was perhaps headed to USC. And he gets 12 yards on his first carry. Yeah, me being a former Cal back, I have heard about Jaden Knott now for the better part of six to eight months. And let me tell you, everything has been positive. He's young. He's strong. He's got the breakaway home run speed. And you saw there not only patient in the backfield, but good feet to slide outside. A four-star freshman from Norco High School in the L.A. area. And he'll give it back to him. And he patiently finds another hole to pick up three yards. And we'll bring up second down at seven. Another good display of patience from a young back waiting for the blocks, not getting impatient and able to find four yards. Cal offensive coordinator Bill Musgrave compared him, said he reminds him of Philip Lindsay, of course, yeah. played in the Pac-12 at Colorado, but Musgrave worked with him when he was a, a young running back with the Denver Broncos. So one quarter in the books, and UC Davis, a couple effective drives. Cal with a big fourth down stop and trying to jumpstart this offense here on the opening Saturday. Start of the second quarter. I know you uh, enjoyed cruising around Berkeley, a lot of uh, nostalgia, a lot of nostalgia, <laughs> a lot of music coming from all sides of uh, the area. You take a look at Jaden Ott, the true freshman and two redshirt freshmen, J. Michael Sturdivant and Maven Anderson. J. Michael Sturdivant played briefly last year, does not have a catch. Maven Anderson debuting today. Both Sturdivant and Anderson, top 30 receivers in the class of 2021. All of these guys, four stars by 247 Sports. So a lot of reason um, for the optimism that, that this Cal offense could be more explosive and dynamic this year. And they're trying to get that going today as Ott remains in the game and now shifts out of the backfield. Plummer alone. And that is batted down. He was trying to get it to Maven Anderson. And Jackson Cloyd, the quarterback, broke it up. That was a very heads-up play there by Jackson Cloyd, getting his hands up in the passing lane. Could sense he, he was sensing a quick screen. The offensive line doesn't do a good enough job of getting his hands down. Cal trying to get a little tempo going here on third down. Ott leaks out, pressure. Plummer steps away. And his tight end is cut down. Kolecki Latu is tackled by Devin King. First team all Big Sky cornerback. And a drive that started with some promise will end in a punt. Yeah, when Jack Plummer goes back and look at the tape on this one, he had Jeremiah Hunter about 15 to 20 yards downfield on the sideline, scot free. But I don't think he was able to see clearly with all the all the defenders in his face. Made the smart decision and a good defensive play. That's three good series there by UC Davis defensively. So Jamison Sheehan on for his third punt of the day. And this takes a great bounce. And what a fantastic punt from Sheehan, the former Aussie Rules football player, the senior. A 65-yard boot. And in a game that special teams is so important to both coaches, Dan Hawkins and Justin Wilcox, really emphasize it. And UC Davis has had some good starting field position today, but this is not one of those times. No, this is the worst starting field position that UC Davis has had um, 
really all game and you know if the offense can't do it sometimes you have to lean on your special teams to change the field position and start making the game and start changing the the morale and, and start giving hope just with field position. UC Davis three and a half yards per play which isn't great. Cal right now 0.3 yards per play offensively. That's definitely not good. Hastings from the end zone and that's batted down. Darius Long, the College of San Mateo transfer from nearby Alameda, a true nose tackle, and that was an athletic play. Yeah, that was a good job by Darius Long. They tell defensive linemen, if you get through the offensive line, Scott Free, take a second to look around because <laughs> I hate to say it, but a lot of times they tell the defensive linemen, you're not that good. <laughs> so if they let you through, look behind you. Hastings with time, now he's under pressure and he's sacked by Xavier Carlton. His first sack is a Cal Bear. So you see Cal defense getting a fourth down stop on the last possession and now it looks like the pass rush is starting to wake up, come alive. That was a great defensive play there. Carlton 15 games the last two years at Utah. Aggies are three of six on third down today, but this is a third and 13. It's going to be important for Cal to get off the field here. A couple of tight ends in the game. Flags fly. Free play for Hastings, and he throws it away, but it looked like perhaps that Cal jumped off. Absolutely. Number 44 defense in the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty, still third down. And it's uh, an opportunity to introduce ourselves to Michael Mothershed, our referee, who didn't have any work yeah. to announce in the first quarter. Which is pretty impressive. There's no, no penalties in the first quarter of the first game of the season. And, um, and uh, you know, and when offense is backed up, there's really no reason not to try a, a hard count or a, a, a snap on two. You don't really lose that much. And if they jump, you get a five yard gain. A much more manageable third and seven. Pressure coming, and that's complete to Hutton. He's able to get away from the first defender there, but Lumagia Hearns and Carlton track him down. And that was just a yard shy of the line to gain. Yeah, Craig Woodson also got in on that number two. But just a good job. They're playing a solid zone coverage and just rallying up to the football. And previous drives, they weren't able to bring the ball carrier down before the stick, but this time they got him down a yard shy. Henry Reich on to punt for the second time from his own one yard line. Jeremiah Hunter will backpedal and take this at the 35. Got some space to survey, jumps through. Across the 45 to the 46 yard line. So good starting field position here for the Bears as they try to get it going on offense. Pac-12 football is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. And by Jockey, the official apparel and comfort brand of the Pac-12 Conference. Look for Jockey's Made in America collection at Jockey.com. And by Allegiant Airlines, nonstop life. 7-0 UC Davis leading Cal. 12-20 to go in the first quarter after a 51-yard Henry Reich punt and a 13-yard Jeremiah Hunter return. We talked about the importance of special teams and, and the emphasis that both programs put. This is the best starting field position Cal has had all game, and, and that's because of the long punt that they were able to down inside the UC Davis 10. The 65-yard punt from Jamison Sheehan that eventually helped lead to a UC Davis punt to return. So here's Jaden Ott trying to dance his way forward, and boy, he keeps the legs moving and finds about four or five yards, four yards, where it looked like maybe there was not much. You know, there, was, there wasn't much, but he was able to get skinny and find a way to fall forward. That is the sign of a very good back, backs that fall forward, backs that are able to get something out of absolutely nothing. Plummer under center now on second down and six. Back to Ott, big hole. And he's able to get a couple and then 
pulled down by Evan Tattersall. Tattersall wearing 57 in white today. The Cal transfer played in 20 games for the Cal Bears. He was recru recruited by the Aggies out of high school in Granite Bay in the Sacramento area. And makes his Aggies debut today against his former team. So now it's third down. Pressure comes, and there is J. Michael Sturdivant. His first catch of his young career. There we go. That was a big third down pickup. But more, more impressively to me, um, was Jada not standing in there and picking up the blitzer, giving time for Jack Plummer to find his receiver. Third event, the 17th ranked receiver in the class of 2021, and Ott remains in the game. Plummer will fake it to him and now throw to Sturdivant, who's able to go down and make another first down catch. Sometimes you got to make the, the hard catches in order to help your cue out. We know that Jack Plummer is more accurate than that than that pass, but that's the that's the essence of team. Pick your teammates up, go make the hard catches, move the chains. Sturdivant at the bottom of the screen with Maven Anderson and Jeremiah Hunter at the top. Plummer on first down, pressure. He's able to get out of it. And on the move, he finds Jeremiah Hunter for another Cal first down to the 11, maybe the 12-yard line. Great job by Jack Plummer. Fills the pressure on the front side, slides up into the pocket, and then releases out to the right. Able to keep his eyes downfield. Jeremiah Hunter found the empty space. First down, Bears. At the 11 yard line, they could pick up a first down just shy of the goal line. Here is Ott, who dives through, down to about the seven. Well, you, you mentioned Jay not picking up the blitz. Uh, how difficult is it for a freshman to come in yeah. and, and take on that responsibility? Well, it's, it's different and it's tough because you don't really do that a lot in high school. So it's a new trait, it's a new skill that you, that you have to play and you have to do it well enough so that the coaches trust you to do it in the game. Second down, back to Ott. And he gets a couple more down to the three and a half yard line and it'll bring up third down and short. Cal can pick up the first down without scoring. And now we're now we're in a situation that we talked with Coach Wilcox about yesterday, scoring in the red zone for Cal offensively. Here it is, second quarter, down seven. Got a good drive going. Go ahead and finish it off with six points. The big tight end, Kalecki Latu, checks into the game. He is in the slot at the top at six foot five. He is a big target. Ott remains beside Plummer. Plummer looking the other way. Hunter wide open. Touchdown, Bears. The first touchdown pass of Jack Plummer's Cal career. Just a beautiful pitch and catch. The fade route. I mean, when, when you're practicing red zone as a quarterback, that is the route you work on probably more than any other route with your receivers. They ran it to perfection. Jeremiah Hunter able to sell the inside in a quick two steps, release back to the outside to the back pylon. Touchdown Bears. And so maybe they feel like they've now broken through. Dario Longhetto for the point after. And Cal has evened it up. 8.54 to go in the second quarter. And a good drive led in part by the legs of Jay Knott. And it ends with the touchdown pass to Hunter. Cal Bears with a touchdown to even it up 7-7 here in the second quarter in Berkeley. 8.54 remaining before the half. An eight play 53 yard drive started with great field position as you can see went 326 and resulted in Jeremiah Hunter. The, the veteran of this receiver group, this young and highly touted receiver group, catching the touchdown from Jack Plummer. Hunter, remember, had the bobble that resulted in the interception earlier yep. today. Able to come back and, and, and make up for the turnover. Turnovers are definitely something to, to keep note on, as well as field position in this game. And you saw both teams taking advantage of field position when they had it. Dario Longhetto to kick it away to Trent Tompkins. And 
Tompkins going to get out to about the 15-yard line. A little miscommunication on that return. He's not happy about it. And that's where UC Davis will trot back onto the field. Tompkins, who's taken some direct snaps offensively so far today. He hasn't thrown the ball yet. But uh, that's in his repertoire as well. And now UC Davis has to answer after it feels like maybe Cal has settled in a little bit. Yeah, you know, it, it's going to take a minute, especially, you know, as I say again, the word experience. You know, it took me a, a one big hit. Once I got smacked in the mouth one time, I woke up and I, and I was ready to play. But sometimes it takes a little bit in order for you to find your groove and find the rhythm. And you saw Cal offensively find that rhythm last drive. Hastings finds C.J. Hutton racing underneath the defense and he's able to make the catch and pick up about six yards on first down cj hutton had quite a bit of speed there on that crossing route coach said he was the fastest player on the team he's out there in the slot sure-handed receiver from the slot position they move him around they move all these players around um, offensively now hutton the man that goes in motion and here's Ulanzo gilliam getting about a yard and it'll be third down and short. Hutton, who was third on the team in receptions last year from the uh, powerhouse that is Folsom in the Sacramento area. Gilliam from nearby Merced. Third down and two here for the Aggies. It's Gilliam again. And Gilliam's able to find a hole and burst through. Uh, Jackson Sermon eventually brings him down, but he's able to pick up the first down and 12 yards. That was an impressive push on third and short by the right side of this UC Davis offensive line. And Gilliam is a smart enough, veteran enough back to understand once you see that offensive line get that push, get behind him and get the ball upfield. Great run, great play. Uh, the right guard, Jake Parks, making his 43rd consecutive start of first team all Big Sky and a preseason FCS All-American. Flags down as Hastings unleashes the throw a little behind Chaz Davis, who slowed up to make the catch down to the Cal 38-yard line. We'll check on this flag. Looks like it's going to be on the Cal defense. Outside, number 98 defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. 25-yard uh, connection. Nate Burrell, the man that jumped, but doesn't matter for the Aggies after this. Cal defensively wants to limit the big plays, and UC Davis wants to expose the spots in the zone. That time, Cal was in a cover three, so the seam is where you want to go with the ball. Chaz Davis does a great job of finding himself open. I said a little behind, but really Hastings was protecting Davis from Daniel Scott, who was coming over and, you know, could be a big hitter and can make a play on the ball. He's looking for Justin Kraft there, incomplete, second down. Yeah, offensively, you see Davis, you want to keep the ball away from, from Daniel Scott as much as possible. Um, he's just that big of a playmaker here. And offensively, you see Davis, they're throwing a lot out right now. A lot of different run looks, a lot of different pass concepts. They threw in Wildcat. The playbook is open. Hastings on the move. Launches for Hutton, who had a step on Colin Gamble, the nickelback. But now it's third down. Yeah, it was an out and up, and Gamble kind of bit on the out part for Henry, who's going to punt it away to Jeremiah Hunter. And that takes a brief Cal kick, but well placed along the sideline around the 13 yard line is where the Bears will have it. Well, the thing that Cal fans and UC Davis fans can agree on September 17th, 2005, a day to remember, <laughs> because that was the day that UC Davis pulled off maybe its greatest win, a game they call the miracle game. They shocked the Stanford Cardinal. A game that Stanford led 17 to nothing. UC Davis came back and won 20 to 17. Uh, a day that uh, I remember it very clearly shocked the college football world. They have never beaten Cal, but right now a 7-7 game here in the second quarter after the UC Davis punt. Cal's offense back to work after a scoring drive the last time. 
And they go back to Jay Knott, who is uh, taking over, it seems, at running back here in this game for the Bears. Yeah, Jay Knott's found a good rhythm um, and, and good coordination with his offensive line, hitting the seams right when they right when they present themselves, but not being too aggressive. And of course, falling forward. Four easy yards. Now we split out at the bottom of the screen a receiver, and that's uh, Maven Anderson, the receiver that shifts out of the backfield. Here's Plummer with pressure, looking for Anderson down the sideline, and he can't connect. That was a great job by number four, Rex Connors, on the UC Davis defense, staying step for step with Maven down the sideline. And now a third down, a third and long. Cal just two of five in third down situation so far today. Plummer. Nearly intercepted. J. Michael Sturter then came away with it. And Cal converts. Oh, that looks like it was going to be fixed the other way for Devin King. <laughs> I think I think everybody in the stadium thought that was going for six the other way. But a great job by J. Michael Sturdivant to oh. stay to keep the concentration and hang on to that pass. That is not an easy catch. A 37 yard pickup. And here is Jaden Ott who bounces it outside and across midfield before he gets popped by Rex Connors. That's a good game. Boy, Devin King is going to. Yeah. Thinking about that one tonight. Yeah, I think so. Because he was right there. He played it perfectly. It was an outside route, and the ball was in the air just a little bit too long. I bet you next time he gets it, though. If Plummer gives him an opportunity again, he may not. <laughs> Here's Ott getting to the outside and picking up the first down. It's just everything's moving forward with this guy right now. It really is. He's averaging around five yards a carry. Yeah, and really there was nothing there on the run. You see Davis defensive line did a great job of setting the edge, but Ott using the speed, bending the corner, and making something happen. First down for Plummer. Ott picks up the pressure, and Plummer cannot connect with Mason Mangum. A flag is down. And we'll check on that, but it was Ott that picked up the uh, pressure off the front edge. Here's Holding Michael Mothershed. Number 73, offense. 10-yard penalty. Still first down. That's the center, Mike uh, Matthew Sindrick. Yeah, Matthew Sindrick right there at the middle of your screen. Got on his skates and kind of fell backwards and brought the defender with him. Positioning, feet positioning on the offensive line is a point of emphasis, staying balanced, staying square, not getting your weight too far back or too far forward because the defensive line of UC Davis is big, heavy, strong. So you've got to keep good position and good, and good feet. First down and 20 for the Bears. So we'll give it back to Ott. And not much space, Chase Smalley. The UCLA graduate transfer wearing number 19 in white who appeared in 12 games for UCLA graduated from UCLA in three years already has his UCLA degree of course an MBA from Davis and he's working on his second graduate degree at UC Davis that's impressive and playing football throughout all of that that's that's very impressive after a two-yard pickup it's second and 18 Plummer lofts it for Hunter. Did he stay in bounds? Yes, a catch. It's a great catch by Jeremiah Hunter. They're going to hurry up to the to the line and get this ball snapped. There is a UC Davis player down on the sideline. It was the man that was in coverage, but it's also going to give the referees a second chance to look at at the catch, make sure he was in bounds. Judson Howard is our replay official. A 27-yard pickup. High points the ball, but he does land out of bounds. It's going to be determined on if they felt he had possession of the ball when that left foot touches. Mm. It's going to be close. 
You're right. Definitely gets a foot down, but is the ball moving yeah. while that foot is down, or did he get that possession before he came down out of bounds? And that's why Cal was trying to hurry to the line, maybe in part also because they just hit another big play to Hunter, who's having a nice game. He's waiting to see the replay. Yeah, the passing game has really stepped up its, its productivity here in the second quarter for Cal. They're getting the ball down the field, making some big plays, but more importantly, the receivers are making coming up with big catches. And that's Jeremiah Hunter with two big catches now after the unfortunate turnover on the drop pass. I think we're going to have a review. Michael Mothershed is running towards the uh, sideline, and indeed we do. So it's time for an official review. Our first of the uh, of the day. Now the replay officials will do what's called a quick review. They will try to avoid having the referee come run over to the sideline. But if they can't determine within about a minute or less, then they'll bring over the referee. And in this case, so far, I would say, Shane, we haven't seen anything that would say it's going to get overturned, right? A catch on the field, but let's look. Yeah, they called it a completion on the field. And, you know, you, you have to find enough evidence to overturn that. So I think that's what's going to come down to. Is there enough evidence to say without a doubt that he did not have a foot down when he had possession of the ball, when he finally gained possession of the ball? From my standpoint, I'm not sure if there's enough there. Nice official review is presented by Chime. Dan Hawkins, the lower left. Justin Wilcox in the upper left, two men that know each other very well. Michael Mothershed has seen what he needs to see. Have to review. The ruling of a completed pass stands. So the call stands, or the completion stands. And I'm one for one on the year. I called it a catch. Keeping your own score, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to win at something. I can't play anymore, so let, at least let me win this. <laughs> <laughs> so another big play from Jeremiah Hunter already has a touchdown today. And it's another big completion. So that's a 27-yard connection. J. Michael Sturdivant has a 28-yard catch. So we're seeing the explosive plays yeah. in the passing game today that Cal really wanted out of its offense. There's Monroe Young is the receiver that just went in motion. And here is Jaden Ott, who sidesteps forward for three yards. And it will bring up second down at seven for Cal. And just again, as we saw earlier here in the second quarter, Cal has finally entered the red zone. And we know the points of emphasis this year for this offense is to score touchdowns, not field goals in the red zone, touchdowns. Ott patiently takes the ball. Boy, he is just in no rush, and he picks up the first down. down to just a simple check down if you will but a swing Jaden knots one on one and he's going to win that I think a majority of the time well watching him in practice now watching him in the game one on one is one on none yeah. Jaden not it's just not enough people to tackle him yeah 10 play 87 yard drive and uh, for Ott he finished it off with his first career catch Longhetto with the point after. Then for the first time today, Cal leads on the second touchdown pass for Jack Plummer. Cal has taken the lead with 2.25 remaining here in the first half. Great student turnout at Memorial Stadium. A 10-play, 87-yard drive. Took just four minutes and eight seconds, and it ended in the true freshman the early enrollee arrived in january behind the scenes and i'd say he's arrived on on the stage today in his debut jay not yeah it's definitely a name we're going to be saying for the rest of this season 
Um, you know, 10 plays, 87 yards, and, and they did that in just four minutes. That tells me that this offense moved efficiently on that drive. Not many wasted plays, not much wasted time. They had an objective, and they executed it perfectly. Dario Longhetto to kick it away again. And this into the end zone and out. 225 away from halftime. When that happens, we will send you to our San Francisco studio for the Bear Halftime Report with Ashley Adamson, Nigel Burton, and Michael Bumpus. They'll be looking ahead to some of the games later today, plus a discussion about the college football playoff and the news of uh, impending expansion, plus first half stats and highlights. That's all coming up on the Pac-12 Halftime Report, the Bear Halftime Report. How about, by the way, Shane, Arizona yeah. trying to avenge the loss to San Diego State last year. They are, leave that game's almost a halftime, and Arizona's up by two touchdowns with Jade Delora. There we go, there we go. Well, this is a part of the game. You mentioned the emphasis, red zone scoring, third down offense. Yeah. The end of the half and the start of the second yes. half, this is also an area that's very important to Justin Wilcox, to score and to get stops. Yeah, and, and it, it it started back um, last year against their game against TCU. They gave up defensively a long run right before halftime. TCU gets the ball right after halftime, goes down and score. And, and so before the offense even touched the ball, they were down 14 points. And so this is the emphasis that now we're seeing two minute drills defensively stopping them. Because as we know, same situation, UC Davis gets the ball to start the third quarter. That catch there from McCallan Castles, the former Cal Bear, making his first catch of the day for 12 yards. And UC Davis on the move. Here's Hastings to Castles again, and he's got another first down one-on-one -on -one with his former teammate, Daniel Scott. Castles started for Cal against UC Davis back in 2019 before leaving and uh, having a great year last year. Second team, all big sky, and 6'5", 233. You can see he's a matchup problem. Two tight ends in the game with McCallan and Thorpe, McCastles and Thorpe lined up to the left. Hastings looking that way, and there is Thorpe, who is all alone, falls down inbounds, and it'll bring up second down and about four. Yeah, with a better throw, Thorpe will be able to stay on his feet and get out of bounds. But because the ball was low, he had to go down to secure the catch. Clock is running. And they still have time. There's still 55 seconds left on the clock, and they're on, they're entering the red zone here in a minute. They have all three other timeouts as well. Hastings. Throws to the sideline, caught by Tompkins, and he's able to step out, and it'll bring up third down and less than a yard. That was just shy of the marker, and a nice play from Hastings. Yeah, and this is, this is the second time now we've seen this from the UC Davis receivers being close to the sticks, close to the first down, but not in position to get the first down by the catch. And flags fly on the direct snap to land Larison. And this will move UC Davis back. Number 54, and that's an unfortunate and untimely penalty for UC Davis. I believe that's their first penalty of the game. It is. And it, unfortunately, it came when they're moving the chains in a two-minute drive. That's when you really, really can't afford to have penalties that push an offense back. But by the way that they've been moving this ball so far in this two-minute drill, I think they have plenty of time and, and plenty of experience to get this first down and, and put themselves in position for points. Hastings on third and six, and it's nearly picked off. Craig Woodson had his fingertips on it. It falls incomplete, and now it's fourth down. Craig Hastings with a great read. He's able to see the receiver and the quarterback at the same time, so he jumped the route underneath just not enough to hold on to it because I, I tell you what if he would have held on to that interception there was nobody that would have been able to stop him from scoring a touchdown fourth down and six Aggies are gonna go for it here with 42 seconds remaining in the half pressure coming Hastings gets it off to Kraft and he's shy of the first down 
Isaiah Young there to make the stop. And now Cal will take over with three timeouts in 36 seconds. That's a great job by Isaiah Young. The receiver motioned inside tight. And typically when you get that, one of the two receivers is going to go across the field. Isaiah Young understood that. He knew that. And as soon as the receiver caught the ball, he was right there on him, expecting a crossing route from the inside. That's a great defensive play, a good heads-up play in this situation. Peter Sherman's defense, back-to-back -back fourth down stops now after UC Davis picked up its first fourth down try. So now three timeouts, 36 seconds. Can Cal get down the field here? They're at the 34. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to need a big play, a chunk play at some point early. Um, more specifically, the first play. You want to pick up at least 15 to 20 yards, a chunk play that gets you closer to field goal range. But with three timeouts, with 36 seconds, three timeouts, and you probably have about 30, 40 yards to go, you can open up the playbook. Plummer, under pressure, steps up and dumps it down to Hunter, who gets out to the 40-yard line. And with 25 seconds now, Cal will take a timeout. Let's see what Bill Musgrave can dial up here for this offense. Time now for Nextiva team talk. We need to talk with your team. Always use Nextiva. So there is Bill Musgrave in the white hat, the Cal offensive coordinator. What's he saying to his guys? You know, two-minute drills, two-minute keys. Um, you know, there, there's certain things that now you only have two timeouts, 28 seconds to go. There are certain reminders. Get out of bounds if you can. If you catch the ball in the middle of the field, go ahead and get down so we can call the timeout. You want to eliminate the, the travel, especially for the big guys, the offensive line, a big play down the field. If you're unable to get out of bounds, get down, get the timeout. Give those big guys a chance to catch up to the line of scrimmage. J. Michael Sturdivant goes in motion. Empty for Plummer to the sideline. Hunter is able to get out at the 48-yard line with a first down and uh, 24 seconds. 24 seconds, still not quite across the 50-yard line. So if you're UC Davis defensively, you have to understand the range of where Cal is trying to get to to have a makeable field goal, keep them out of that range, keep them in front of you. They still have two timeouts, but if you can keep the ball in bounds, burn those timeouts. Probably need to get to at least th maybe the 35, 36, 37 for a Longhetto field goal attempt. There's Hunter, there and he's inside of that, down to the 32-yard line. Another big play for the Cal passing game. 19 yards on that pickup. You see, you see Davis player down. And that helps Cal. They were not going to take a timeout. They were rushing to the line of scrimmage. That's Jahail Budget, the returning starting corner from Elk Grove. Yeah, and that, that's that chunk play that I was talking about. Most two-minute drills, you need a chunk play if time is not on your side. And because of the timeouts that they had, they could afford to throw the ball into the middle of the field, which opens up the playbook. Well, they didn't need to use one there. His budget heads to the sideline. And the clock runs. Plummer, pressure, dumps it down to Ott. Ott slips a tackle. Ott is inside the 25. Now. Bear halftime continues as we welcome you back to Berkeley. And Cal, after trailing 7-0, leads UC Davis 17-7. Aggies will get the ball first to start the second half, along with Shane Vereen. I'm Guy Haberman. Great to have you. Great to be back yes, it uh, is. in a football stadium. And um, for, for Cal, it took a little while, but they got things going offensively. Yeah, they really did. And, you know, I understand there's going to be those first game jitters and, and the anxiety, and you got to calm down. And for me, it took a couple hits to really focus myself into the game. But they finally did that. And the way they got it done, the way they got momentum was Jaden not. Third possession of the game, he finally comes in. Fourth possession of the game, excuse me. He finally comes in and he gets the offense rolling on the ground. Some tough runs, showing great patience for a young back, showing great acceleration, changing speeds, being patient behind his blockers. Right, right here, patient, patient, speed, patient, speed. That's, that's, that, that's a trick, that's a skill that takes most backs a long time to really learn. Also, he's got the speed to go around the outside, but what's great to couple with a strong rushing attack, the passing game. Jeremiah Hunter with the first touchdown of the game for the Bears, and then the swing pass, one-on-one, -on -one, Jaden Knott. If I'm even, I'm leaving. 
and they just get, were able to get things going and, you know, were able to create some explosive plays in the passing game as well. And they really woke up in that second quarter. The first quarter, they, I think they were still trying to settle in and try and figure things out. And UC Davis took advantage of that. But in the second quarter, the Cal offense and defense, for um, you know, they picked it up as well. Uh, 0 of 2 is what Jack Plummer started and uh, 12 of 14 after the 0 of 2. So we talked about Justin Wilcox right uh, at the end of the first half. Yeah. Now what does he want to see at the beginning of the second half? Well, UC Davis is going to start the second half with the football. Um, so I think he wants the defense to come up, show up, three and out, or at least prevent a score of any type. That's the, th that's the trick. When you, ha when you score at the end of the half and you don't get the ball in the second half, you want to keep that that advantage, that three-point advantage that they have now until the offense gets the ball back for Cal. All right, we know Dan Hawkins is UC Davis team, highly rated. He said the best UC Davis team they've ever had. And uh, this is a big game to them. Cal 10-0 and in the previous 10 meetings between these two. They're going to try and make it 11. Second half is coming up. Harmon will probably try to squib it, and he does. Ball comes loose, and the Bears have to get out of bounds. Along the sideline, another one. They're still in deep trouble at midfield. They tried to go a couple of. The ball is still loose as they get it to Rogers. They get it back down to the 30. They're down to the 20. Oh, the band is out on the field. He's going to go into the end zone. He's going into the end zone. Will it count? The Bears have scored, but the bands are out on the field. Well, without question, one of the greatest, perhaps the greatest uh, call of an iconic. iconic moment yes. in college football history. 40 years ago, the play, and this is the 40th anniversary this year, the 125th big game. The voice, of course, was that of Joe Starkey, who announced that this will be his final season as the voice of the Cal Bears, his 48th year. He'll get to go to Notre Dame for the first time. 55 years since that last meeting, so he'll make that trip. <laughs> and he's still having fun. He's in the booth next to us, and uh, so many Cal fans and college football fans alike thank Joe for his wonderful career and hope that he gets a few more iconic moments this year before it's all said and done. Absolutely, and we were talking about iconic moments in college football, and we might be West Coast biased, but I don't know if there is a, a bigger, a more important or a bigger iconic moment in college football other than the play. And Joe Starkey was the voice of the Bears when, when I was here, when my teammates were here, and um, nothing but admiration, respect, and love for, for the terrific job that he's done. And now that I'm on the media aside it's it's I mean it's just so impressive how long he was able to do it I think he just held up his glass and gave you a toast <laughs> as, a, as a thank you uh, Cal will start on defense but look at what a difference yeah. things uh, made once the quarter turned to the second yeah once, once the first quarter was done I, I think you know coach Musgrave must have said something to him look guys we're here now the game is unfolding the game is has presented itself this is what we need to do relax it's we're not going to call too many plays that are going to have you thinking they just want these players to go out and play and they finally found some rhythm i thought the the field goal at the end of the half with just seconds left on the clock was a very strong drive as well for the cowl offense and but you see davis gets the ball first and let's see how they can start off this second half dario longhetto will kick it away for cal Land Larison with the touchback. And so UC Davis, whose offense was clicking early for Dan Hawkins and uh, offensive coordinator Cody Hawkins. And they'll try to get some going. They scored, took a 7 0 lead, but um, Cal's defense seemed to strengthen up as this first half went along. And so now the third quarter, and Miles Hastings, who was 17 to 27 with a touchdown. But it wasn't just him, direct snaps. Yeah, a lot of people touched the ball for UC Davis there in the first half, and they they were moving the ball very well. It, was, it really came down to two fourth down stops by the Cal defense. Yolanzo Gilliam back to work. Just under five yards of carry 
in the first half. Such a unique player, the preseason Big Sky offensive MVP. He's from Merced. Uh, Dan Hawkins told us, uh, to his knowledge, he did a lot of research. Dan, of course, played at UC Davis, his coach at UC Davis. They got a lot of phone numbers. They can track people down. They don't think there's ever <laughs> been a three-time captain yeah. in Aggie football history until Yuanzo Gilliam. Yeah, when I hear three-time captain, that tells me all I need to know about you as a person and as a football player and as a teammate. Second down, Hastings intercepted, picked off by Craig Woodson all the way back. A pick six, 38 yards. I don't think Cal has a turnover chain, but whatever they got, it's time to break it out. We saw Craig Woodson have a ball go right through his hands on a route that he jumped in the second quarter. This time he was able not only to jump the route, read the quarterback, secure the catch, and score the touchdown. There's nothing that gets a defense going more than a pick six or, or a scoop and score. Those are the plays that defenders live for. And Woodson taking advantage of his second opportunity as an interception. How great he must feel. I believe that's some sportsmanlike. Yep, so on the celebration, a penalty against Cal. You couldn't I quite hear Michael Mothershed there, but that'll be enforced on the kick. Okay. But I was just going to say, Craig Woodson, this young man who was hurt in camp, a knee injury that wiped out last season for him last year. And so this is his first game back from that knee injury, and he's got a pick six. That ball with a flag down is able to yeah, get through the uprights for the kicking, point after. Kicking team. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay the try. There was a pretty egregious hold there on the left side by Cal. I, I saw it all the way up here, so that's why the flags flew. And so a 10-yard penalty, and Longhetto will try it again. Two penalties in the first half for Cal, and, uh, and two here, uh, one on a dead <laughs> ball and one on a point after. So this will make it a 31-yard point after attempt after the Craig Woodson interception return for a touchdown. Longhetto has got it again. So a score before the half. 24 to 7 now the Cal lead 14 20 remaining here in the third quarter coming up later today the action continues as we head across the bay to watch Stanford take on Colgate you can watch it right here on Pac-12 Bay Area or download and stream wherever you might be with Pac-12 now of course there's so many new quarterbacks in the league but what about one of the key returners Tanner McKee back for Stanford. He's one of the big keys to the Pac-12 this year. Yeah, no, he really is. And, and, you know, I believe Stanford the last few years have not, they haven't even looked anything like their old self. And I think he's the quarterback that can bring them back to a respectable record and really beat some good teams that they're faced this year. Trying to get a, a receiving core that went healthy is one of the most dynamic in the league back. And E.J. Smith, we're going to get to see yeah. him. Take over is the number one running back at Stanford today, Emmett Smith Jr. And so a lot to watch for when Stanford takes the field. Nice return for Lan Larison. And UC Davis did not get much of an offensive uh, drive there to start the second half because they had the interception return by Craig Woodson. And here's Larison trying to break one out and nearly did. Yeah, and he almost got through there. Just a shoestring tackle that tripped him up. But now UC Davis. I understand you're down 24 to 7, but you have field position. You have great field position. And the last time that they had good field position led to their first score, first and only score of this ball game. Let's see if they can do it again. They put some they put together some nice drives, but that scoring drive was a 14 play drive back to second possession of the game. Here's Yulonzo Gilliam breaking into space. He's racing Woodson and he's gonna beat him to the end zone. A 60 yard answer for the Aggies. And that's just what they needed. One play, one touchdown. Hand it off to your three time captain and let him do the rest. 
Offensive line does a great job up front. I don't even, I didn't see him even get touched. If, it, if he was, it was just at the line of scrimmage. Then he was able to show off the wheels, show off the speed. Let's see here on the right-hand side, they just cut off the defensive line. And there's nothing you can do. Raymond Woody kind of got a hand on him there at the second level, but it wasn't enough to slow down. Alonzo Gilliam, six points, UC Davis. But that point after is yanked wide, and Isaiah Gomez misses the point after, so it's just six. So we've had two touchdowns in uh, 56 seconds here in the second half. So much for a 14-play drive. <laughs> two touchdowns and three plays total in the second half. And uh, UC Davis able to take advantage of the the missile either was misaligned defensively for Cal or somebody was definitely out of position. But a great job by Jake Parks and Nico and Nico Sorali, uh taking care of that right hand side and, and giving Lonzo Gilliam room to run. Gilliam now over 100 yards for the day with that 60 yard run. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think we'd expect anything else from, from UC Davis. It's a program that had a great year last year, came in preseason uh, top 25 in the FCS out of what is a very good FCS league, the Big Sky. We know they're well coached. We know they're disciplined. We know they have very high expectations. They return a lot of talent. And this game means a lot to them. Playing Cal, it's just 64 miles from Memorial Stadium to UC Davis's campus. A lot of local players on this team and it's a chance to prove themselves. They repeated that this week and they've come ready to play. So they respond and now it's Cal's turn to do the same. The offense will step onto the field for the first time in the second half for the Bears. Yeah, you mentioned the standard that UC Davis and, and Coach Dan Hawkins have, have set for themselves now after, after an eight and four season a year ago. That's the standard now. They, the standard is playoffs. The standard is success. Consistent contender is what Dan Hawkins said, and now they have the momentum. Let's see if they can build on that momentum defensively and get the ball back to their offense. Jay Knott, who had an explosive first half, the true freshman's debut, and he's in the backfield to take it from Jack Plummer as he slips through a hole, slips through a couple of arm tackles, and is finally brought down by Rex Connors, who's had a nice game so far today for UC Davis, the back end of their defense. No, Rex Connors has been coming downhill from the secondary for the Aggies. See the patience, pick the hole, get through, and holding onto the ball. Good job by Jaden Knott. Good tackle there by Rex Connors. After a six yard pickup, now here's Plummer out to J. Michael Sturdivant. Gets the block from Hunter, and he's got the first down before Chris Venable makes the stop. But that'll move the chains for the Bears. It's very simple, good. Good, consistent play there by the Bears. Just getting it to your speed guy, J. Michael Sturdivant, and a good one-on-one -on -one tackle by Chris Venable. First down, Bears. Ott. Able to pick up a couple more yards. Big formation there from Cal with I think seven offensive linemen on the field. No, six offensive linemen, plus the tight end Elijah Maharo was that formation. Yeah, that was a shoestring tackle, and I'm just starting to get the feeling that Ott's getting close, and this offensive line is getting close to breaking a long run. Wow, your your running back senses are tingling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like Spider-Man, but real life. Did you feel that way when you were a player? Could you feel a big run coming? Absolutely. Sturdivant goes in motion. Play action to Ott. Stays in the block. Plummer is just going to throw it away with Cam Trimble in pursuit. You know, that was a great job, I think, on both sides of the ball. Great job by the Cows offensive line to give Jack Plummer time to scan and look and survey the field. And a great job by the back end, Rex Connors, Chris Venable. The backside, the secondary of that UC Aggie defense was not fooled by the play action. They stuck and, and surrounded the receivers that were in route. So now we're third down, Cal three of six 
on third down today. Monroe Young into the game at the bottom. Plummer steps up and he throws complete. Kolecki Latu for a first down as Cal converts. Second catch of the day for him. Ten yard pick up there. That was a very good job by Jack Plummer. Going from his first to his second to his third. And this might even been his fourth read out to the left hand side. Wide open. Great job of converting on a third and medium. Hot remains in the game behind Plummer. He'll take the handoff here. On first down, he breaks it outside, and he can't quite get to the sideline. It was this close. That's a <laughs> nine-yard pickup. I guess the senses, the senses are really going now if they weren't before. Oh, man. He just had one more man to beat. Cuts the ball backside. That's really good vision. But also a great tackle in space by Blake Cotton for the UC Aggie defense. I'm telling you, I think we're going to see some big plays here in the second half on both sides. We already had it. We've already had two. And a pick six. <laughs> we're going to see more. Now here's Damian Moore with his first carry since early in the game. And he's going to try, and he does successfully move forward across the line to gain for the first down. Kyle's been able to put some some good drives together offensively ending this the first half and now here now here in the second half and one thing I've seen that's different now than what we saw in the first quarter when they ended the quarter with negative yards is just everybody seems to be more calm more relaxed confident understanding their assignments and completing those assignments Plummer with pressure coming and he gets out of it sneaks away from the sack now he hurls it downfield for a hunter and they couldn't connect wow <laughs> that was close and that would have been a drive killer for the bears had the uc davis aggies been able to bring him down strong pressure from the left hand side of the offensive line jack Plummer able to keep his feet using a little stiff arm there in the pocket and throwing the ball the only person that would have came up with that pass would have been Jeremiah Hunter. If not, it's out of bounds. That's the experience. That's the knowledge. And that's why Jack Plummer is the starting quarterback. Zach Kennedy was the man with pressure on that play for UC Davis. Here's Plummer trying to dump it down. He may have intentionally thrown it into the ground incomplete. Uh, looking for it to Carlos Brooks, who just got his first snap of the game. Even if he catches the ball, I'm not sure if there was much yeah. happening on that play. It, it would have been iffy. Uh, he definitely would have had to break a tackle uh, with his back turned to the defense in order to make something out of it. Jack Plummer doing a good job of saving his guys. And now they have a third and long. They're able to convert on the third and six a few plays ago. But now you have third and ten. Berkeley. Yeah, hoping it's just a cramp or he, I mean, he's able to get off the field on his own. I think that's a good sign. But yeah. You, you practice, you know, it's, it's interesting because you practice all camp and heat and and sometimes spring ball can get hot, but there's nothing like like the effort and, and the speed and intensity that comes with an actual game. And that's why there tends to be cramps uh, early on in the season as these guys' bodies start to acclimate to game, game time. First down and 10 after the great run from Plummer. He's going to toss it to Brooks. Flag is down. Brooks is able to step out of a tackle and pick up five yards. We'll check on the penalty. I say hot here. I mean, it's hot everywhere right now. <laughs> yeah. It's 81 here, which <laughs> most, mean, most people would take 81, but it's hotter down on the field. Chop block. Number 60 and number 54 offense. 15-yard penalty. Replay first down. And that was Spencer, excuse me, Spencer Lavelle. Yeah, he was engaged already, and then Lavelle came with the chop. It's a dangerous play, dangerous positions that the defender was in. Luckily, he's okay. 
but it is a personal foul and backs up the Bears 15 yards. Lavelle, the transfer from Arizona State, who just arrived in June and figures to be a big part of the offensive line at right guard. Will set up the screen for Damian Moore, but that's blown up by Kavir Baines, the sophomore from San Jose, another one of the uh, Bay Area Aggies making that stop. Yeah, Kavir Baines read that quickly and was able to slip through the blocks before the offensive line was able to get eyes on him. He was there, made the tackle. That's a great play defensively. Twelfth play of this drive for Cal, trying to answer back after the big touchdown run. A second and 25. There's Plummer to a sliding receiver, and Mason Mangum is able to go down and make the catch. No, make that Tommy Christakos with his first catch. A 17-yard pickup for Christakos. Yes, Christakos from the in, from the outside, excuse me, a skinny post. Th that's one of those routes that you work on and you just have a feel for with your quarterback. It's not always in the same spot in the route, but you know when you feel that opening that the ball is probably coming and Jack Plummer putting it low to save his receiver from a big hit. And also gives them this third down and manageable yes. third and eight. To Carlos Brooks remains in the game with pressure coming. Looking for Chris Tacos and it's broken up. Incomplete Blake Cotton who had the nice tackle earlier on this drive able to prevent the touchdown to the man they call top shelf Tommy. They love throwing it up to him in the end zone. Yeah, and I think if, if Plummer wa was to take this back, he might just put a little more air on the ball and put it above the defender's head, but a great defensive play. Able to bring his left arm through the hands of the receiver, break up the pass. And they, they needed that play defensively because if Cal scores a touchdown there, it's a completely different ball game. So they hold to this field goal attempt from Longhetto, a 40 one yard try and he's got it a solid day for Dario Longhetto so far and so Cal's able to get points out of the drive and it's 27 to 13 Bears time now for Allegiant Airlines non-stop life one of the deep connections of the first half this was a 27 yard pass play from Jack Plummer to Jeremiah Hunter and this has been a big emphasis, you know, a few of these uh, nonstop flights, so to speak, downfield, big plays. Yes, it's something that's been missing in this Davis offense. Something that you know, Bill Musgrave, who's happy to just run the rock, as we said, oh, throwing the ball downfield sounds like fun. He says fun is moving the ball. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He'll do whatever it takes. <laughs> but they're excited to have some big play threads. Yeah, and it's, it's going to bode well for them for the rest of the season if they can make this something that they can consistently accomplish on Saturdays. A touchback after the field goal from Cal. So you see Davis with Yuanzo Gillum, who just had the 60 yard touchdown run. Entered the day needing 155 rushing yards at 151 all purpose yards to become the leaders in both of those categories all time in Davis history. And there's, a, there's some great players, some great coaches have come through UC Davis. There's Chris Peterson, Dan Hawkins, our buddy Nick Aliotti, one of the uh, Co UCD Mafia. <laughs> did the coach play for UC Davis or did he, co did he coach at UC Davis? Both. Oh, really? Okay, I didn't know that. Check him out. Paul Hackett. That. Yeah. College Football Hall of Famer. Uh, Jim Soaker, Mike Bellotti, Ken O'Brien, of course, Nathaniel Hackett, who's now the uh, head coach of the Broncos, and his defensive coordinator, Ijiro Averro, is also a UCD alum. It was funny, we were talking to Dan Hawkins this week, and he said, uh, you know, Justin Wilcox, he's a Davis guy. <laughs> Which is, it's a type, yes, right? Yes. Even though Justin didn't uh, go to UC Davis, of course, he went to Oregon, but he's an honorary. A UCD guy, those two, Dan Hawkins and Justin Wilcox, very close. Such a great mutual respect, which was obvious talking to both of them this week. Third down here for UC Davis. 
Got looked like they were about to bring some pressure, something that was few and far between so far in this ball game. Hastings, pressure picked up, and that is complete. Lumagia Hearns might have made the stop. I mean, you can see it's right at the line to gain it's gonna depend on, on Chaz on Davis. Yeah, it's going to depend on the spot. I thought he had enough to get it at first when he caught the ball and maybe when he went down a little bit behind. But they're going to give him the progress at the catch. You know, Lumagia Hearns not in bad position, um, but clearly trailing. And on third and nine, you got to have tighter coverage than that. That's big for the Aggies if you give it up the field goal, trying to stay within striking distance. An offense that can take control of the game. Gilliam dances back inside, and Jackson Sermon is there to make the stop. How about what Jackson Sermon did, not just last year as a player, but then uh, when he decided, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go to Cal. Jackson Sermon was, and he told us he didn't know this was possible, he was dual enrolled. He was taking yeah. 12 units to finish up his business degree at Washington and taking eight units to begin his work at Cal, which is, he said, a ridiculous workload. He said it was <laughs> a lot of work to be going to school at UW and Cal at the same time. Hastings, that is brought in. I think that might have hit the ground, and indeed the officials are ruling no catch. Yeah, he said, Jackson Sermon was saying he had 12, he was taking 12 credits yep. at UW and eight credits here at Cal. Uh, I, uh, 12 credits for, was my limit for me <laughs> when I was here. <laughs> Let's take another look at this and see if it indeed hit the ground. Yeah, his front foot kind of slipped out from underneath him when he planted to throw the ball. Not Cass Davis doing a good job of trying to make a play on the ball, but just not enough. Not enough force on the pass. And Davis not arguing with that call. Third down and seven here for Hastings. Cal brings pressure, and they beat it with the perfect call. It's Gilliam leaping over to mid. Oh, three years ago. Here's Hastings, mm -hmm. and there's Sermon, who's appeared in the picture suddenly yeah. to <laughs> knock it down out of nowhere. Yeah, I don't think I don't think the quarterback Miles Hastings expected him to drop back, as you see, Sermon. Coming up as if he was going to blitz the B gap, falls back into coverage underneath the slant, gets his big right hand on the ball, knocks it down. Tremendous defensive play. Second down and 10. As Sermon comes off the field, Nate Ruchina replaces him at one of the linebacker spots. Hastings is going to pull it and dive forward to the 28 yard line. And that'll bring up third down and two. After a pickup of seven. This has been a very good drive from, from UC Davis, picking up a few third downs. But right now, they have the Cal defense on its heels. Right now, Cal defensively is not really sure what they're going to get from the offense of UC Davis. And, and when you're in that offensive position, especially as a play caller, you feel very good because you feel as though anything you call is going to get some positive yardage for you. Third and three. Hastings, here comes pressure, and he's able to get rid of it, but it's broken up by Oladejo. Josh Gale had it in his hands for a moment, but Oluwafemi Oladejo knocked it away. Yeah, Josh Gale it has, was another camp standout for the UC Davis Aggies, but Oladejo not giving up on the ball, and look at the pressure that they're starting now to create on Miles Hastings. Oladejo not giving up on the play, knocking the ball out of the receiver's hands. Fourth down and three, they're gonna go for it. One of three so far today is UC Davis on fourth down. They've been consistent. Pressure, Hastings throws complete for the first down to Justin Kraft. Got it by a yard and the Aggies keep it moving. That was a pressure throw. Had the defense bearing down on him, hung in there. Just kind of a flick of the wrist to his receiver, Justin Kraft, who secures the catch and the first down. It, when I say UC Davis has been consistent on fourth down, I, what I mean is that there's been no hesitation. They no. are, this yeah. is, there's, there's no question. They came ready, this was part of the plan. Uh, they came ready to do this. Alonzo Gilliam back in the game with the play clock getting low. They just get it off. Hastings loads up, uh -huh. wide open, and then not. Intercepted.
intercepted by Jeremiah Irby, the true freshman, making an immediate impact and taking away what looked like to Miles Hastings a touchdown. Wow, he led oh, Cal wow. in interceptions in camp. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what a play from this young man. After, as the play was developing, you might have heard me, but I was like, uh-oh, touchdown. Nope, I'll take that one. Great defensive play there. Was he in? That's the question. There is Jeremiah Irby, the true freshman from Menlo Atherton at East Palo Alto in the South Bay. This interception, the only question, does he get a foot down with possession? Yeah, it's yeah, he has possession. It's just a matter of if that left foot lands. Oh, I saw some dust. I saw the turf kick up. The little rubber pellets are good for something, I guess. And now we can see that that left foot did come down inbounds before the right one landed out of bounds. A great play from the true freshman, Jeremiah Irby. A touchdown saving play as UC Davis was driving and now Cal from its end zone and that just got away from Jack Plummer. You know, oh, similar oh. to the other screen pass where he threw it into the ground, I'm curious if he sailed this one because the intended receiver was going to be lit up. <laughs> I'm trying to say that nicely, but the defender was not blocked and he had a head of steam coming straight towards the receiver. Live to see another day. On my right, 65% completion percentage today. He'll hand it off here, and now this will get some space to Carlos Brooks. Puts his shoulder down. It's a good run by DeCarlos Brooks. When you're backed up as an offense, when you're backed up inside your own 10-yard line, the main goal of the entire drive is to get one first down. And DeCarlos Brooks was able to do that. Under two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. After the second interception for this Cal defense, pressure coming, and Plummer gets rid of it and unable to squeeze it was Maven Anderson still looking for his first catch. Yeah, they're trying to get the ball out to their to their playmakers out there on the edge with some quick screens because they're easy throws and and you can you can't guarantee four yards, but you have a pretty good chance if you have a good enough receiver at the other end that you're going to fall for at least four to five to six maybe even seven yards. But the UC Davis defense is doing a great job playing downhill and sniffing all of those out. Two tight ends for Cal. They give it back to Brooks. And he's running behind Ben Coleman, the left tackle. And that'll bring up third down and six for the Cal offense. Well, Jeremiah Irby, the young man who had that pick, we talk about J. Michael Sturdivant, Maven Anderson, J. Knott, the guys that are really excited about the young players yeah. on offense, but Irby is near the top of the list on defense of big potential Bears. That ball is caught. Brooks is unable to get to the 22-yard line, comes up a yard shy, and it's fourth down and one. And so Cal will punt. It's a great job by Brooks picking that ball off his shoelaces. If he was, if Jack Plummer was able to get him a ball right in the chest, I think he would have been able to make his man, make that man miss and get a first down. But regardless, nice job of the Cal offense to, to move the chains at least once, giving your punt team room to breathe. And now you have a chance with a good punt to change the field position. Jamison Sheehan had a 65 yard punt earlier in this game as he sends this back to Trent Tompkins who takes it at the 28 yard line and is able to get away from the first two defenders and then the swarm arrives and a return of about five yards in the final seconds of the third quarter. So you see Davis back onto the field with the offense here in Berkeley. Kickoff week presented by Taco Bell. 
in the final seconds of the third quarter here in Berkeley. There's Jeremiah Irby, who just had the acrobatic interception. He led Cal in interceptions. He's a true freshman in fall camp. And so it's good to see that it translated to the field. They expect him to play a lot right away. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Coach Wilcox was, you could tell he was very excited and very pleased about his young players that he has, especially Jeremiah Irby. His only concern was if they were going to be able to take that practice success and turn it into game success. And Jeremiah Irby saving a touchdown with an interception. I think, uh, I think he's going to be on the field a little bit more after making that play. And safe to say this would be a one score game if he doesn't make that play. So uh, UC Davis feeding Ulonzo Gilliam over 100 yards for him in this game so far. And we'll see if they go back to him on their second down and seven that's upcoming. One quarter left here in Berkeley after trailing 7 nothing, Cal leading UC Davis 27 to 13. And Cal, one quarter away from starting the 2022 season. 1-0, fourth quarter coming up. <laughs> Been a gorgeous Saturday afternoon. Great place to kick off the college football season, the first full Saturday, week one. Here in the Bay Area, 81 degrees. A one o'clock game and it makes for a perfect day for all these fans. Jack Plummer, his debut, Jaden Ott in his debut. The two of them connected on a touchdown. And after that slow start in the first quarter, 300 yards just about of offense in quarters two and three. Yeah, the offense has looked completely different since that first quarter. Um, two sacks in the first quarter. We still have yet to see Jack Plummer go down behind the line of scrimmage since then. And I think they've just settled into this game. Maybe a little bit of a broken play there. Direct snap to Trent Tompkins. It looked like he wanted to do a little replay with the running back. Ulonzo Gilliam. Flags come down. That was a second down at seven. Illegal block in the back. Number 73, offense. Ten-yard penalty. Still second down. That's the left tackle, Nick Amoa. Yeah, Nick Amoa is one of the most talented offensive linemen that they have. Dan Hawkins thinks he has potential to play at the next level. He's a Sunday guy. You know, you see Davis. At center. At center, correct, correct, but still playing on Sundays. And, you know, you see Davis in the FCS. Dan Hawkins believes that they have, they have a lot of talent in their league and in their division, and it, it's no cakewalk. They got a lot of guys that he feels can play on Sundays. Here's Ulonzo Gilliam, and Sermon helps him out, along with Miles Jernigan. It was uh, Xavier Carlton that was the uh, offended player. Amoa pushed Carlton in the back. They just double teamed Carlton on that last play. And finding a true pass rusher to replace Cam Good's productivity, yeah. that's one of the things this Cal defense is looking for right now. Yeah, exactly. And, and you couple that with the loss of Brett Johnson, who would have demanded double teams every snap leaving players one-on-one. -on -one. Now you don't have that. There's Ola Dejo with the chase down tackle, but this is going to bring up fourth down and about three. Player down for UC Davis. See there at the end of this play, big hit there by Daniel Scott. Kind of fell into it. But the offensive lineman got caught up Getting out in front of his, out in front of his receiver, got tangled up there just a little bit. Looks like the right guard Jake Parks, who today made his 43rd straight start, a senior from Huntington Beach, Jake Parks, preseason pre All-American, FCS offensive lineman. Yeah. Jake Parks is an intricate piece to this offensive line. And yeah, you get rolled up on. Got rolled up on there trying to trying to lay a block and clear a pathway for for Gilliam. 
Well, UC Davis has been happy to go for it on fourth down uh, today, but not this time. They're going to punt it away. And Cal looks alert for a fake punt. If that's what UC Davis tends to do, they're definitely in their safe return right now. Cal is. Justin Dwinell, who has not punted today. It's been uh, Henry Reich that's been the punter in this game. But this time it's Dwinell's chance, and he lines one to Jeremiah Hunter, who's got to slide down at the 23-yard line to make the catch. So a stop and first possession of the fourth quarter for the Bears when we return. Pac-12 kickoff week is presented by Taco Bell and brought to you by 76. We're on the driver's side. And by Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Cal's answered a lot of the questions they wanted to so far today, but the, the game is still in the balance. UC Davis uh, will not go away as expected, and they've made life difficult, I think, from a, a game preparation and execution standpoint. Justin Wilcox probably likes the Aggies as an opponent because they make you win. Yes, yes. It was part of the expectation, and uh, so his team right now with the ball, up a couple scores, maybe one more here to get a little breathing room as they start this drive from their own 23-yard line. Jaden Ott back into the game, and he takes the handoff from Jack Plummer. And he gets four yards. So Jaden Ott, carry number 16 for him today. Up over 100 all-purpose yards for the true freshman. In his debut, we've been, seen three running backs, along with Damian Moore, who started, and DeCarlos Brooks. Plummer with the pitch and catch to Monroe Young for the first down. Out across the 35 to the 37. His helmet comes off. It's a good catch there, sitting in, finding the soft spot in the zone, showing your numbers and your hands to the quarterback, giving him a big target. Catch the ball and then get up field. That's a textbook throw and catch. And I believe that's Monroe Young's uh, first catch of the season for him. You're right. Yeah. For a first down. Seventh catch of his career, the redshirt senior from uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico. Yeah, Cal has spread it around today. Here's Ott again, bouncing it to the outside. He gets away from two defenders and is able to break across midfield for a big run. 15 yards, 18 yards make it on the pickup. There's another, another explosive play, and this time it's on the ground. Jaden Watt. Three defenders in his face at, at as soon as he got the ball and then at the point of the attack, another two able to get outside. And that's the speed. That's the element that differentiates him from the other backs for Cal is his speed. Trying to get it out to Maven Anderson on the receiver screen, but Devin King was right there. King who had the, what we thought would be an interception go through his hands, a chance to pick six earlier, but he's been uh, right on top of things that UC Davis defense. I know Cal wants to utilize the screen game as a as a very big part of their offense going forward, but today UC Davis has... 10 minutes and 48 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. Cal leading UC Davis 27-13. Next Saturday, they'll be right back here, same time. One o'clock as Cal takes on UNLV. Coverage starts at 1 on Pac-12 Bay Area or download and stream live wherever you might be with Pac-12 now. And they'll be back up there on Tightwad Hill. As UC Davis begins with a one-yard gain. You know, UC Davis, you have... Ten and a half minutes remaining in this game. It's it's imperative. I know it's going to be a long drive, but it's imperative for this offense to go down and, and get some get some points here. Hastings with time gets it down to Larison, who's able to slip a tackle and get up the field to make this a third down and four upcoming for the Aggies. Good job by Larison, concentrating on making the catch, securing the ball first, breaking a tackle, getting some positive yards, and then getting out of bounds. Setting up a third and four. 
very manageable situation. See, Davis has been pretty solid on third down. There's always room for improvement. Cal showing pressure inside pitch to Larison, and he is gobbled up by Ricky Correa, who they really like this young man from Central High School in Fresno, a junior, making his first career start today. Yeah, nice little shuffle pass underneath. Cal does a good job of tracking it down from behind. And he is short. Seems as though UC Davis is setting up for a punt, but Coach Wilcox was talking to us yesterday, understanding and respecting the special team's prowess of UC Davis and Dan Hawkins, and they are well aware of fakes. He said fakes don't come at midfield. They come where you don't expect them to yes. come. But on fourth and one, Twinell will punt it away here to Jeremiah Hunter. And good starting field position for Cal at the 42-yard line. The uh, Bears will have UNLV in town next week, as we mentioned. And then they'll go to Notre Dame on September 17th, the first time that those two have met in 55 years, the last time that uh, Cal played Notre Dame. Notre Dame was the number one team in the nation. South Bend, September 23rd, 1967. That's going to be fun, and you know it's going to be quite the experience for for this Cal team to to be in that stadium on a Saturday. Touchdown, Jesus, staring at them. <laughs> well, I think they they've done some additions there. I don't know if you can see Touchdown, Jesus, from oh, really? every spot in that stadium. Here's to Carlos Brooks for three yards. You know, in the progression of offense, um, especially especially an offense like Cal, who, who's gone through quite the transition from last year to this year, you, have, you need to learn when to put games away, and you need to have those emphatic drives in the third, in the late in the third, fourth quarter, that just put teams away. And there we go. What a throw from Plummer on a line to Monroe Young after he deeped the defense into thinking he was going to dump it down to the running back. And then he found Young for 36 yards. That is now Cal's seventh explosive play. Was a point of emphasis all camp and especially tonight, today. An explosive play by Justin Wilcox standards is anything's a play more than 15 yards. And they've been able to do that now seven times. Great run after the catch by Monroe Young. Rex Connors was down for a moment, but now he's up and walking off. Jack Plummer, we had such a good time talking to him, and how happy is he to do what he just did to somebody else? Because he's been practicing against Daniel Scott yes. all uh, yeah. all preseason. He said they play games with each other. He looks them off, and yeah. but Daniel Scott knows what he's going to do now. <laughs> They've done it so many times, and that time he was able to uh, find a new victim. Sometimes it's a breath of fresh air to see a different color uniform and not not a not a teammate. There's Plummer, lofts it, end zone, looking for Young again, and that sails out of the end zone in the back corner. Jalen White was in coverage, and it's second down and 10, under eight minutes to go here in regulation. Tried to go back to Monroe Young, but he was well covered there on the outside, bringing up second and long. They are in the red zone once again, and so far in the red zone, Today, Cal has been able to, to score touchdowns, not just field goals. Last year, they were 58% red zone touchdown percentage, which was ninth in the league. And uh, Justin Wilcox said, not good enough. Here is Brooks keeping his feet and churning forward for a couple extra yards. And that'll bring up third down and almost six. This is a big, talented front defensively from UC Davis. Um, their size as a whole is, is bigger than the offensive line for Cal, but these backs, every single one of them that's gotten in the game for Cal has done a great job of turning the feet and keeping the ball moving forward. Plummer to Maven Anderson. He's got it down inside the 10, and he's in for the touchdown. A 14-yard score, Maven Anderson. His first career catch, 
is a touchdown. Great job, great drive by this Cal offense. It's calm, steady, making plays. Get the ball to your athletes, your playmakers, and let them do the rest. If Cal is able, offensively especially, to grow from this, from this game and everything after the first quarter, they are going to be a very viable, very efficient offense in the pack. Maven Anderson, the 30th ranked receiver in the 2021 class, making his debut today after redshirting last year. Couple of catches for Anderson and his first career score, puts Cal up 34 to 13. You know, be before, before my time is done, I, I gotta see at least a half of football on Tywan Hill. <laughs> I'm putting it on my bucket list right now. They, they, that'll be the first time they've been that close to one of the players. Yeah. <laughs> you show up up there. <laughs> You're going to stun some people. <laughs> but they, they're only getting a half. I'm not staying up oh, there okay. for the four quarters. <laughs> well, you never know. I mean, you go up, they got, <laughs> they got sundries. <laughs> you got a drink. Nice hit. Nate Ruccino with the tackle. Or in Patu there as well. So UC Davis, they got to get something here. Yeah. Yeah, and you're seeing them in the no huddle right now. I think that's the right thing to do. Up tempo pace, start getting the ball down the field. Hastings, long throw, and it's caught by Justin Poario. His first catch of the day. It's a good route. Very good timing and anticipation by Miles Hastings. As soon as the receiver got out of his route, got out of his break, the ball was right there. CJ Hutton goes in motion. And here's the running back, Ulonzo Gilliam, who's had a nice day today. Uh, he was over five, he was about five yards of carry back in the meeting 2019. Gilliam's carried 14 times today. Uh, that was his 14th carry. And he's over eight yards per attempt. Yeah, 14th carry for 115 yards and a touchdown, long run of 60. It's a productive day, but I know he wants to walk out of here with a victory. Mateo Perez gets his first carry of the game. As we're under six minutes now remaining in the fourth quarter, there's Gilliam now getting a rest. Hastings. He's thrown the ball 42 times today for this UC Davis offense. This is number 43, and it's complete to Mateo Perez, who just had the carry, and now he's got a first down reception. Nice job by Mateo Perez coming in, taking the handoff, getting some yards, and now catching the ball out of the backfield, showing his versatility. Go to him twice, results in a first down. A young guy was a camp standout, somebody that Dan Hawkins really admires and appreciates his hard work. Hastings throws to the tight end, Blake Thorpe complete. Another first down, and this gets down into Cal territory at the 36-yard line. Right now, Daniel Scott, Lumagia Hearns, some of the starters in the secondary not on the field for Cal. Isaiah Young, the starter at corner, he is out there. Jeremiah Irby, who had the interception, he's at the other corner spot. But uh, Daniel Scott, of course, such a key, uh, the safety behind it all. There's Cal's defense, read that screen very well. And second down to 10. Yeah, Nate Ruchina saw it from the snap. He was able to read the offensive lineman and get in the way of that pass. And, and smartly, Miles Hastings throws it in the dirt. Right now, you see Davis sitting on the 36-yard line, well in striking position. I would like to see a double move and maybe a shot to the end zone. Hastings under pressure, and he's able to get it out to Gilliam, who's forced out at about the 30-yard line by Nate Ruchina, the sophomore from nearby Danville. Having a player like Ulonzo Gilliam 
helps any quarterback because you know when when things get tough in the pocket, just find 34. Just find Gilliam. He's sure-handed, and he'll prevent loss of yardage. He just picked up the blitz, flag down, and that ball is caught by Hutton, and then he steps out of bounds. The ball came out after he was out of bounds, but we'll check on this flag. It's a good cut block by Gilliam on the outside there. Took down Gamble. Personal foul, illegal block below the waist. Number 34 offense, 15-yard penalty. Hmm. Not so good anymore. Down. That's new in 2022. If and let's take a look at this. If this is the, the blitzing uh, defensive back. And so that is what is known as not on the initial rush. You can only block below the waist if you are at, in the tackle box to start. Okay. And if it occurs on what is called the initial rush, right? So immediately off of the ball, uh, a running back can block below the waist, but not in the situation there where Gilliam had stepped up, was looking for somebody to block, faded off to the left, and then did the block, right? So if he was lined up just beside the quarterback and somebody comes free and he immediately blocks below the waist, that would be allowed. But in that situation, uh, that is no longer allowed. I think the play that got a lot of people's attention in the NFL preseason was the block on Kayvon Thibodeau, which is a legal NFL play, mm -hmm. but is no longer a legal college play. Yeah. You know, I, I don't really agree with it as a former running yeah, back. Understood. But uh, that, that's, a, you know, that's a weapon in the arsenal that I like to use sparingly. But when you use it, it's effective. But I do agree with the safety of all players. Hastings on fourth and 17. Throws complete and a first down. UC Davis converts. They needed 17. They get 19. And they keep the drive alive. Great individual effort by Miles Hastings to extend the play, directing traffic. Finds his receiver downfield. No secondary can cover forever. So when you have a quarterback like Miles Hastings that's able to extend plays, people start to come open. I was Trent Tompkins who made that catch. Hastings goes down, sacked by Miles Jernigan with help from Xavier Carlton. And now UC Davis will take a timeout. Miles Jernigan, Xavier Carlton, part of the four rotational guys that they are gonna use on the outside and until they find their their camera good for this year, if you will, their effective pass rusher. So you're gonna see Miles Jernigan, you're gonna see Xavier Carlton, you're gonna see Odua Isabor, you're gonna see Braxton Croto. You're gonna see uh, those four guys primarily on the outside rushing the passer. They're gonna get a lot of reps. They're gonna be evaluated pretty heavily because it's so important for a defense to have a pass, to have a pass rush. Congratulations to Yulonzo Gilliam, who is now the UC Davis all-time leader in all-purpose yards, setting that record here today, 4,630. After the first down, Daniel Scott returns to the game and immediately makes an impact. <laughs> the man has a nose for the ball, what can I say? As they, bring, as they bring out his replacement at the safety position, Raymond Woody, but you throw him in there for one play with Raymond Woody had some type of technical issue or equipment issue. And there he is, shows up around the football. So third down and 18. Hastings, pressure coming, and he was looking for Babb, but not there. Incomplete, Woody was the closest man to it. And now it's fourth and 18. Yeah, he had a lot of pressure, had to get rid of the ball, and unfortunately the receiver, which was Chaz Davis, was still in his route up the seam, didn't give eyes back. It's just as important for the receivers to see the blitz as it is for the offensive line and the running back and the quarterback. A 50-yard attempt here coming from Isaiah Gomez. And that's got enough leg, and he just hooked it. 
So the Aggies can't get points. 34-13 with 247. The score remains. You know, one of the big pieces of news this week leading into week one was the news that the CFP board, uh, the presidents and chancellors, voted to expand the college football playoff to 12 teams as late as 2026, could be as early as 2024. The Pac-12 statement, the Pac-12 is strongly in favor of CFP expansion and welcomes the decision of the CFP board. CFP expansion will provide increased access and excitement and is the right thing for our student athletes and fans. We look forward to working with our fellow conferences to finalize the important elements of an expanded CFP. So the question is how soon will this be uh, in place and it could it be as quickly as 2024 we'll find out but there's a lot of uh, incentive from a lot of people to to have it happen yeah i love it and i think they start i, I want them to start it sooner than later i'm not sure you know i feel like 2024 why not let's just start it next year <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm all for more teams in the playoffs because I, I think more teams should get get a chance um you know, because there's teams that lose a couple at the beginning of the season, but then they finally find their find their way and find their momentum towards the end of the year and, you know, miss the playoffs by a game or two. I would like to see those teams get in so we can really figure out who is the best team year in and year out. Kai Milner has appeared in the game, now at quarterback for the first time today, replacing Jack Plummer, whose debut at Cal is done. Kai did not appear last year. A redshirt freshman from Gilbert, Arizona. Jack Plummer's from uh, Gilbert, Arizona as well. So the next pass Milner throws will be his first. Here's Plummer after a good day today. Three touchdowns, 268 yards passing. Chris Rogers in the game at receiver. He's the man that went in motion and there's DeCarlos Brooks stopped up. Yeah, I, I think, you know, there are people who say, look, the college football season, what is so great, a great season in order to get there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, look, there's, there's just so many teams, there's so many schools, there's always gonna be, there's always gonna be kind of that debate at the cutoff. Um, but I think expanding it will be good. I think it will really, help teams that that maybe are in lesser conferences quote unquote lesser conferences have a chance to to make the playoffs you take a look at the preseason poll in the pack of course utah oregon usc and ucla the top four oregon state in there at five and they've got a big game tonight against boise state on the blue turf here's to carlos brooks with the first down so what do you think about this league race, the march towards Allegiant Stadium, the Pac-12 title in Las Vegas? Utah was picked to win the league. Uh, I mean, I, I think I think it's it's Utah's league to lose um, at this point. Um, I expect Utah to go down to go down to Gainesville tonight and, and handle business. Um, but I do think that there is some some room in the second, third, and, and fourth place finishes for for the Pac-12. Because as much as we want to see it say it's going to be Oregon or USC or UCLA, I mean, Oregon unfortunately got beat pretty bad by Georgia today, so it, it's open. 49 to 3 was the final of that game. USC playing Rice right now, and they're up 21 to 7. Arizona winning today. You know, the question too is who's going to, are there going to be some surprise teams? Yeah. Uh, Oregon State would not be a surprise. Everybody. There are a lot of people that think Oregon State's going to be good. Now, them being in the championship game, that would surprise some people. Correct, yeah, but, you know, Jonathan Smith and, and what they've done and what they've created up there in Corvallis is, is not a secret anymore. After the success that they had last year beating Utah at home, I think that was the key and, and the signifying game um, that Oregon State kind of has arrived, and they're back. Excited to see Cam Ward in Washington State, to see Kalen DeBoer now at UW. There's so many changes. and. You know, I think uh, Stanford, who we're going to see coming up later today yeah. on Pac-12 Bay Area and Pac-12 Now, 
they're one of the big questions, right? If they're healthy, can they can they create the type of offense that they may need to surprise some people around the Pac-12? Yeah, I know there's a lot of questions about what USC is going to look like and what UCLA is going to look like, not really playing a top opponent in the in their preseason games. Um, but I think the biggest question mark is Stanford. I'm, I'm still I've been scratching my head the last few years as to as to why they haven't had the success that we that we've come to know um, with David Shaw. Um, but this is, like you said, health is going to be their main, their main hurdle. If they can stay healthy, keep that receiving core healthy, get a run game that's that's formidable. I think Stanford has a shot to throw their name in the hat as well. Well, the the first league game for Cal will be Arizona. That'll be week four, and uh, all of a sudden that game looks a lot more interesting after what Arizona did to San Diego State today. But that's a ways away. Two longtime friends and uh, former. Co-workers, Dan Hawkins once hired Justin Wilcox at Boise State, sharing a moment. Jackson Sermon, the former Husky, now Cal Bear, playing for his dad for the first time since second grade flag football today. <laughs> Peter Sermon, the defensive coordinator for Cal, and uh, the debut of Jack Plummer. A lot went really well for the Bears, Shane. Yeah, no, it really did. I mean, outside of that first quarter where both sides of the ball were trying to find their footing, find their confidence, find their rhythm. As soon as the whistle blew to start the second quarter, it was a completely different team, both offensively and defensively. I think the defense really helped with two fourth down stops there in the second quarter. Offense was able to take care of, take advantage of good field position, some good explosive plays. I believe they ended the they ended the game with eight explosive plays, plays over 15 yards, both in the pass and on the ground. I think this is this is kind of the Cal team that that Coach Wilcox and and his coaching staff was looking to see. It wasn't pretty, but when it was efficient, they got it done. It had its moments of pretty, though. It did have its moments. The deep passing game, I know he's going to be excited about that. Yeah. Uh, 268 yards passing, three touchdowns for Jack Plummer. The debut of the freshman running back, Jay Nott. He carried the ball 17 times today. Two more receptions for him. Jeremiah Irby, the yes. freshman with the big interception. So a lot to build on and to be excited about for the Cal Bears. They'll be back at it next Saturday at 1 o'clock. Stanford still coming up here on Pac-12 Bay Area and Pac-12 Now.